When you start learning about neural networks, you read a lot about matrices and vectors and softmax and sigmoid functions and all that mathy stuff. And that has its place, but I thought for a lot of developers, it would make a lot more sense to just start working through code to implement a neural network in just regular old object-oriented code. So that's what I'm gonna do now. A neural network is based on neurons and a neuron, so uh, let's do a class neuron, uh, has a forward function which takes some inputs, a list of doubles, uh, inputs, and uh, outputs one number, right? So that's all we need for now. We'll just return 0.0, .0 for now, right? That's the that's the function of neuron. There's not much else to it. This is, of course, inspired by real-life biological neurons. Neurons are little cells that are in your head and in my head, and they are connected to many other neurons, and they can be excited. They basically have these electrical impulses, right? And so they, they kind of listen to inputs from other neurons in the brain, and they have some... Uh, they kind of decide on a very basic level whether if they hear an impulse or hear, I guess, if they sense an impulse in these other neurons, should they also uh, excite themselves? Should they kind of forward the impulse to other neurons that are connected to them? So biological brains are these like millions and billions of cells and neurons that are connected not to each other, like not every neuron is connected to every other neuron, but it's like kind of like a mess, right? And there are, I think, something like 70,000 um, little connections from every neuron to other neurons. And it's but just like, it's not in neat layers. It's all over the place, as far as I understand. Uh, but artificial neural networks, the ones that you know from like GPT and Dal DALI and all of these other things, they are in neat little layers. So that's what we'll do next. We'll uh, code a layer class. A layer class will just basically have a set of neurons. In our case, it's better if it's got a, a list because we'll be accessing them by index. But so it's a list of neurons. Oh, and uh, we will initialize it with that list. And each layer will basically put together all the outputs of every neuron in its in the layer and make a list of doubles, basically a list of outputs uh, based on the inputs from a previous layer. Right, so these are inputs, and we will have a list. I'll do it this way, but it doesn't really matter. So for each neuron, neuron in neurons, we will uh, find out what is the output given these inputs. Right, so that's the layer. And the last thing we need is the network itself. And that's another class, uh, network. And it has a list of layers, which uh, we will also network. Also, it's class with two S, not three. And we will initialize layers like this. And then uh, we also have uh, basically a forward function. We could call it uh, something like process or like, you know, like just get um, given these inputs, uh, tell me what the neural network thinks, <laughs> uh, but we'll just call it a forward again. So list of doubles forward and that's the output and the input is or again inputs, right? So this function will take the inputs, which is basically anything that you feed into the, the, the network, and it will uh, always like, put it 
put the inputs into the first layer and then the outputs of the first layer it will put into the next layer right so we can do current a list of inputs is inputs and then four four layers layer in layers uh, we will do um, current equals layer forward current right so we take what's whatever we have from the last step and we ask the layer to process it or to, to forward it right and then we just return the last current the last output and that's the whole thing uh, now obviously we need to work on this uh, this function here and we'll do that in in a minute but in 36 lines of code you can see like the whole shape of a neural network it is a network with layers and the layers have neurons and they just forward things from one layer to another all right so let's have a look at the neuron and add the forward function in the neuron so we have inputs these inputs are coming from the previous la layers sorry the previous layers and we could combine them in different ways we can for example just sum them up and actually this is kind of what we'll be doing but if we if every neuron just summed up every of its predecessor neurons then the network would not be very smart right it would just sum numbers so even the biological networks every neuron has the ability to um, to be differently sensitive to different other neurons so for example one neuron could be very excited anytime that other neuron out there sends um, a message or an electrical signal uh, and it could be kind of sensitive to that other uh, neuron over there or something and then it combines them together and either sends or doesn't send an electrical signal to it to, to the neurons that are listening to it right so we need something called weights we need to for every of the inputs we need to know how much is this neuron listening to it uh, and how much of that signal will be uh, either amplified or not amplified in uh, the output of this neuron so um, we could just do this we could have a list of double again with weights and uh, we can have it here initialized from the start and then let's let's actually construct exactly what we said we will we will do four actually we will assert that inputs length equals weights length right uh, and then we can go with four um, i equals zero i is less than inputs length i plus plus oh plus plus we will have a result and that result will always be plus equal uh, inputs i times weights i right so for every of the inputs we have a different weight that will be learned and we just multiply these two things and add them to the result and we do that for every of the inputs and in the end we also uh, every neuron can be kind of like either kind of lazy or um, more excited than anyone else. That also really helps. So we want to have one other um, parameter called bias, which is something, again, we'll have to do this, which is something that we'll just add to the result after we add all the inputs, right? So a bias. And then we return the bias so now that's again almost it right i mean no no we, do, we don't return the bias sorry we return the result then they are all combined together in the layer and next layers and until it's the last layer and the last layer is the output that's literally it 
Now, if you if you train this thing, this 48 lines of code, if you train it, and if you train the weights and biases, that's the only thing that you actually are training, right? These, these values. Um, you'll still get weird results sometimes, and it will not work as well as as uh, you'd expect. So there's one last thing that you will see in any neural network called an activation function, which is after we do all of this, uh, there are different types of functions that you apply to this output. So let's say the result is uh, five, right? Or the result is minus seven, right? Because it can go um, downwards. I don't think in biology it could go into the negatives, but in normal neural networks it definitely can. And so, uh, like, um, if if we just linearly output exactly what the result is, the um, these networks tend to not be as smart. But if we massage the output a little bit, then it is. And that's where um, uh, things like the sigmoid function and and other functions comes from. Or like, if you hear about them, that's that's the activation function. And they are definite, and they're generally uh, the same for almost all layers or all layers. In our case, it will be the same activation fu uh, function in all layers, and even then, we will see nice results. So the activation function for this could be something called the real review, which is literally just sorry max with zero. Uh, so max from the math library. So if it's below zero, it will be zero. And if it's over zero or positive, it will be the result. Very simple function. You'd think that doesn't, you know, what's the big <laughs> change there? But it really does uh, make a big difference in how the neural network will be smart or how easy it will be to train it and how, yeah, how, how capable it will be. So all of this, again, about 50 lines of code, and we already have the whole thing that will the feed forward neural network, and you see all the code here, that's exactly what we'll be doing. That is exactly what we'll be executing. Okay, so this seems nice, but now you might be thinking, oh, well, where's the proof that this actually works as a neural network? Right, and uh, I have this little thing, this little function that will basically train the network to do something that we tell it to do. Now, this is beyond the scope of this talk, by the way, so we'll not be talking about how to train neural networks, but you will have to trust me. At first, it will just assign all the weights and all the biases to random values, completely random. So obviously it will not be good at doing anything. And then it will slowly get to being better at whatever we want ask the network to do, right? Um, and so we have a shape here. This is the input, the number of input um, neurons, the number of neurons in the first layer, second layer, third layer, output layer, actually, uh, right? And then we say this is our evaluation function if we want the network in the end to be able to predict i guess the logical operation of a and b so if uh, out of these two neurons let's say the first one is a the second one is b if they are both yes which means they are all active or activated or let's say 1.0 uh, then we want the first, the kind of the truthy um, output neuron to be yes, and the falsy output neuron to be uh, no. And then in any other case, because this is logical end, in any other case, we want the output neuron to be yes. Uh, I mean, the, the falsy output neuron to be yes, and the truthy output neuron to be true. 
the the reason we do it this weird way is it just works better if if the neural network has uh, if you ask it to categorize or even just uh, return a value like true or false, it's better for it to have two output neurons, and then both of these, in, and then you see you see which of these has a higher value at the end, and that one is what the um, what the network thinks is happening. Okay. So we have this network evaluator, and then we train the network. Right now, we, we train it for exactly one, one round. Uh, and that is so that you can see how bad it is at first. It will just be like completely random numbers. And then we'll do it again with a trained network. Okay, so let's run it here in the terminal. So we'll do the run uh, the network. And you can see that if we evaluate um, one and zero, we would want it to be false, right? Uh, which is actually true. Uh, it will, uh, like the, the falsy value is higher than the truthy one. All right, good, good job. A can completely random network. Same with here. But here, the only time where we sh we want this to be higher than the this, uh, because we want obviously one and one or true and true is true, uh, the true the value should be much higher than the falsy value, and then uh, zero and zero correctly, I guess the false value is is false. But in any case, this is not great we want uh, it trained better right so let me let me app up this to something like i don't know a thousand generations and uh by the way the training here is completely like it's very inefficient uh, training but you can already see see that after a thousand generations one and zero will lead to a uh, falsy value. One, zero and one also falsy. And then one and one, true the value is a lot higher than the falsy value. And this zero, zero correctly falsy value is, is a thing. And it's only, it all is just coming from this network. I mean, sorry, from this little thing and from just weights that are differently uh, set. And at first they're random and they're slowly changed towards something that makes more sense, right? Um, I just want to show you, we also at the end of this, we save the network to disk because it's literally just numbers. It's a list of numbers. It's the list of weights and biases of the different networks. So if we have a look at this uh, and have a look at, I think it's network bin, it's literally just, um, you know, a few of these, I don't know, um, uh, network 168 bytes, uh, which is this little, it's like a sentence. And these are all the floating point weights of our little network. and. It works, right? And is it 20 parameters or 60 parameters in our whole network? And of course, things like GPT-3 have billions, right? I think. So uh, obviously the, the AIs that you work with these days are much, much higher. Uh, but you can also see how even some, something this small can learn a logical operation and yet something um, uh, and so you can kind of extrapolate how uh, how much more you need to do something like generating text uh, or understanding text and replying to your questions and uh, you know building code and stuff like this uh, just so that you like you you don't think that this is just a fluke I can say we want our network to learn 
Zor. Zor? Basically this, this operator. Um, and we will give it a little more time this time. 5,000 generations. Just so that you you see that it can kind of get a little quite precise. And I will again run it. And so uh, you can see how it gets a little better. It's uh, generally... Okay. Um, too, too fast for me. All right. So one XOR zero should be one, right? And it is. I mean, it, it should be true. And it is. The truthy value is true. Zeros or one should also be true, but you can see that this is not trained well yet uh, because it doesn't say yes or no. Uh, then one zor one should be false, and it definitely is. And zero zor zero is false, and it definitely, I mean, almost definitely is, right? So that's the other thing about neural networks. They are not, um, they are n not Boolean in, in the sense of like they, they will give you a probability of what they kind of think but that's that's it they 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 they're not precise okay and just to show you how much better it can get after only 50,000 generations so i needed to wait a little more this is the same size of the network uh the same algorithm of the network obviously uh but only the weights are have been trained for a little longer time and uh one zor zero is you know definitely one here and zero here uh one zor zero again true the is is one uh false is zero and the opposite on of these two so it definitely learns or very well and it's almost certain every time now, obviously, using the neural network to do something that we already know and can do much faster is not that, you know, that's not the point. Uh, so where neural networks actually shine is when you are teaching them something that is very hard to do in normal logic, right? So, for example, this is a very old project of mine. This is uh, learning or teaching uh, neural networks to... Uh, write or to um, uh, to drive spaceships right so just to be clear that spaceship is not like it has thrusters and on different places of its body and so what the neural network does is it will tell which thrusters it should fire at what point right so it's it's not as easy as like left right forward backward it is actually, it has to counterweight the things that it, it does um, as in normal space. And what you see here is the first um, generation of these ships trying to do uh, facing the other ship, I think, right? So uh, right now it's completely useless, right? It's, it's, it doesn't do anything, it's, it's just randomly uh, generated. And we can train it for a long time, and then we can see if it gets any better. Uh, it probably won't in such a small period of time. But now we can actually have a look at uh, that same neural network, but trained after a good amount of time. And you can see that it immediately just faces the other ship. And then in another scenario, again, faces the other ship, right? And another scenario, bam, it faces another ship, even though it was like in a spin, right? Uh, running away from the ship also, right? Just sometimes it's very easy because you're already in the different direction. Other times you have to do a little loop and also like use the thrusters that are towards the ship, even though you are going backwards, like here, it will just like use the thrusters in the, in the forward direction to go back, right? And then ramming the other ship, which, by the way, it's very hard to, to see, uh, I'm sure, but it's it's over here. Uh, then let's do it. Ramming the other ship. As, uh, if you learn it or teach it well, it will do this, and it will do it with, with a lot of force. Bam. And it 
almost never misses, right? It is something that uh, a human will would have a big problem with because again, it's not even it's not just left right. It has a bunch of outputs that it needs to do. So, so spaceship <laughs> um, pilots can be trained as a neural network. A bunch of other things, as I'm sure you know, can be trained as a neural network. And it all comes down to this, to a class uh, with a network of layers and uh, neurons in those layers. And this function that basically just uh, sums inputs and weights plus a bias, uh, runs it through uh, an activation function and returns a result. Now you might be thinking, okay, so if it's so simple, why is everyone talking about matrices and vectors and so on and so forth? And I am not going to go too much into detail, but it's basically a uh, performance optimization thing um, in, in the end, right? Uh, if, it, if this was as fast as what the modern networks need, then people would just use this, I guess. But because... Um, it's much faster to multiply a big matrix of numbers with a big vector of numbers uh, or two matrices together, then that's what, that's what people do. Um, and if you think about it, the neuron has weights and biases, right? The layer is a bunch of neurons with uh, weights and biases. So you can think about each of the layers as a matrix. If you're familiar with, with math and linear algebra and stuff like this, then, then you are familiar with the idea of vectors and, and matrices. And so you have, if you, if instead of like doing it this way with the object oriented way, if your network is just basically a list of matrices, and you can just do like the input, uh, your inputs is just a vector and you just do vector multiplication with the matrix, you get the next layer and then again multiplication to the next layer, blah, 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 many times or as many times as you need. Uh, you apply the activation activation function on the whole vector instead of on, the, on a, every single neuron by itself then you suddenly have a, a, a simpler way of looking at it, a more mathy way of looking at it, and also a more optimized way of looking at it. Because if you think about it, <clears throat> multiplying matrices by vectors is what GPUs are really good at, right? The GPUs are really good at, um, at running some pretty basic computation on a bunch of numbers at once. And that's what neural networks need. That's why a lot of the neural networks, and if or like if you um, use some of the more mature neural network libraries, they often use something like CUDA or um, GPUs. Basically, they use what we already have in GPUs, and they just run a bunch of computation at once. For example applying all the weights and the biases at once by multiplying these vectors with these matrices. That's why. So this code will not be winning any competitions in terms of performance or speed, right? Uh, there, it, it is terribly inefficient when compared to other things that are already out there. Uh, but it's also not super slow, just to be clear, like, like running uh, an input on this network even through all its inefficiencies it it runs in like less than a third of a microsecond not a millisecond microsecond so it's it's not terrible and it's not going to be terribly expensive to run for example for these little spaceship uh, algorithms it's fine. Like if you if you have a game that needs something like this, it will not eat into your um, into your performance bu budget, right? But yeah, it's inefficient. And if you wanted to do it efficiently, 
you you will rewrite it into a matrix vector multiplication and maybe we'll do it in one of the future videos i don't know but right now it's it's meant this code is meant for you to understand more than to uh to, to be in awe on how performant it is it is not okay thanks for watching i hope this was useful it definitely was useful for me when i first was implementing something like this a few years back uh, for me to grasp all that so i hope this translates even if you are just watching someone uh, do the code for you and uh, if you like this kind of content and if you think this is the kind of learning that you need in your life uh, then i do have a newsletter and i hope to be updating it with content like this um, and of course i will be adding some of the content here on youtube so I'll see you around.